Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Subtraction as an Inverse Operation, Part 1. I'm incredibly excited to teach this. I'm actually grinning because this concept, uh, for a lot of students, it seems hard. But actually, I know I can break it down in a way that everyone watching will understand how to rethink what you already know about the operation of subtracting numbers, right? You already know how to subtract numbers. I know this. But very soon, we're going to be subtracting with negative numbers. And we're going to be adding with negative numbers. And then we'll be multiplying with negative numbers and dividing with negative numbers. And so we have to kind of rethink what we know about adding and subtracting, and later multiplying and dividing. And that is the beginning of this journey. Do not skip this lesson, please. If you skip it, then everything beyond it will seem hard when in fact, it's actually really easy. So I'm gonna say something three times, and when I say something three times, it means it's really, really important, and it's the central idea here. All right, subtraction, what you know as subtracting numbers, is exactly the same thing as adding a negative number, right? I'll say it again, subtraction is exactly the same thing as adding a negative number, right? I'll say it a third time. Subtraction, what you know as subtraction, is adding a negative number. So when I say subtraction as an inverse operation, it means doing the opposite thing. Subtracting is really can be thought of as addition, the opposite or the inverse, but when we add, we're adding a negative. Now this is not a lesson on actually adding and subtracting uh, integers just yet. We're just getting comfortable with the idea. So here we have, Subtraction, six minus two, you already know what the answer to this is, but I don't care about the answer, right? I, I'm going to write the answer, but I don't care about the answer. I want you to think about what it is to subtract something. What it means is I have six uh, elephants, let's say, and so I'm gonna put a starting point here with six elephants. Notice this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six elements, elephants. I start with six, and when I subtract two elephants, it means I start with six and I go down so it means subtraction means going to the left by two units. So I go down one elephant and I go down another elephant and I land on the number four. So I can kind of change the color of this if you just wanna be, you know, a little bit cleaner about it. So I start with six elephants and when I subtract, or six dollars, and when I subtract dollars, I go down. Subtraction means going to the left on the number line. When I add numbers, I go to the right. If I were to add dollars, I would be adding one more dollar, two more dollars, three more dollars, four more dollars. But if I subtract two dollars, I go to the left, two dollars. So we already know the answer is four. I know you know that. I'm choosing a simple problem so that you know the answer already. But this subtraction, I want you to get in the habit of realizing the following. It can be thought of as really addition. So in other words, this subtraction can be thought of as six and adding to it something that is a little different. You can be adding negative two, right? So six plus a negative two. I want you to start to think about these two things, how they are look so different from each other, but they actually mean the same thing, all right? You already know that starting with $6 and taking away $2 lands on four, and so the answer is four. And so before I go any farther, I will just say that the answer to this thing is four. Now the, the real answer I want you to write down is this, but it calculates to be an answer of four. And writing it this way and writing it this way is exactly the same thing. Let's take a minute to understand why this is the same as this. This is saying I start with six buffaloes, right, or dollars, and I'm adding to it, but which means I would go to the right, right? But I'm adding debt, remember, when you think about a negative number, it's debt. It's owing somebody else something. So if I start with $6, right, and I add to it some debt, that means I owe somebody $2. So really the idea of adding a negative number is just adding what you owe to someone else, adding debt. So if I really do have $6 in my bank, but I take on $2 in debt, it's like the $6 I have and the $2 that I owe, they fight with each other. Who is going to win? Well, I have $6, but because I add $2 of debt, that means I really owe $2. So I'm gonna take the $2 out of my bank account. And what I'll be left with is $4. That is why this adding a negative number is the same thing as subtraction. Because if I start with something and I add to it debt, then I'm literally subtracting that number from what I have because that is what debt is. I must pay all of my debts as soon as I have the money to do it. You should pay all your debts as soon as you have the money to do it. So adding debt is, or adding a negative number is the same thing as just starting with something and subtracting. And this is really important because when we start to really add and subtract 
negative numbers, it's going to be very helpful to think of it as adding a negative, uh, as we will get to a little bit later. And so now you should be able to see that starting with six and going down by two gives you an answer of four, but also starting with six and adding to it a debt would mean that instead of going up, because I would be gaining money if I go up, really I have to go down because I'm adding a debt. I'm adding what I must then subtract away because I owe it to someone. So really, instead of going this way, I really have to go left anyway. So adding a debt or adding a negative number means I have to slide to the left and I land in the same place. That is why this is four. Again, six dollars is what you have. Two dollars is what you owe someone else. Once they fight, so to speak, whatever, whoever is bigger is going to win. And in this case, I have more money than I owe. So the answer is $4. Now let's take another quick example with not writing it on the board. What if I have $6, but I add to it negative $6. So I have $6, but then I take on some debt and I immediately owe someone else $6. They fight, right? The negative number and the positive number, the debt plus what I owe, I have $6, but I owe someone $6, poof, they annihilate, I have now $0. So in that case, I'd be at $6, but if I owed $6, then I would be sliding to the left six units and I would have $0 left. So having $6 and owing $6, they become the same thing as subtraction. Six minus six is zero, all right? So the point of this lesson is really not to calculate the answer, even though we're going to sort of do it. The point is I want you to rewrite in this way as subtraction being adding the inverse. That's what by, by adding the inverse operation, you're adding a negative number. All right, let's take a look at problem number two. All right, problem number two, five minus one. Well, first of all, what, where is five on the number line? It is right here, right? And what does it mean to subtract one? It means I just start here and I go down one position because I'm going down. And so I land on the number of four. So you know before anything happens what the answer is. You know, I'm gonna put way over here. The answer is actually four. That's the answer we're calculating, but that's not the point of this lesson. The point is I want you to understand that subtracting a number is the same thing as actually adding a negative one. When I add a negative one, it is the same thing as just starting at five and subtracting one away. Why? Because this represents $5, and this represents that I take on a debt of owing someone else $1, and they fight. Who is going to win? Well, I have $5, I take on a debt of owing somebody a dollar, so once I pay my debt, what am I going to have? $4. Because usually addition means I go to the right on the number line, but since I'm adding a negative number, I'm adding debt, which means instead of going to the right, I must slide to the left. And I owe somebody $1, so once I pay my debt, I have $4 left. So what you've learned from this is five minus one is four, and five plus a negative one, is the same thing as subtracting one, which is still four. That is what I want you to know in this lesson. All right, let's take a look at this one. Three minus two. On the number line, what does it mean? It means I start with $3, and subtraction means I go down by two. One position, two positions. And I land on an answer of one. So I know that the answer is just one dollar. Start with three dollars, take away two dollars, I have one dollar left. But that's really not the point of this lesson. We want to rewrite it. This subtraction can be rewritten as addition of the opposite operation, which is negative two. So when you have three plus a negative two, it's the same exact thing as saying three minus two. Why? Because when we start with three, that means I have three dollars. I add to it debt. That means I borrow from the bank, two dollars. So what is my total worth that I have? If I only had $3 and I add to it negative $2 means I take on debt, then really all the money I have is only one because as soon as I pay that debt, I only actually have $1. Three plus a negative two is the same exact thing as saying three minus two because of that. And of course the answer that you get is one there. You can think of the positive money and the negative money fighting. If I had a debt of $3, then it would be three plus negative three and the amount of money I have and the amount of debt I have would be the same and it would be zero dollars that I would really have in my possession, right? They would just cancel and annihilate each other. But here I have a little bit more uh, actual money and so once I pay that debt, I actually have one dollar in my possession. So when you add these, you get one and when you subtract this, you get one. In either case, it's sliding to the left because you're just adding debt. 
Let's take a look at problem number three. Here we have seven plus a negative five. I've been trying to kind of kind of uh, you know, reinforce it, that when you add a negative number, it's just the same as subtraction. So how do we rewrite this in terms of subtraction? Seven, adding a negative number just means subtraction of five. These two things are the same thing. And you know that seven minus five is just two. So the answer to the calculation is two, but I'm mostly trying to show you that these are the same things. So let's see how that's the case. Seven plus a negative five means I would start at $7. And usually when you add things, you go to the right. But what you're adding is just debt. So instead of going to the right, you have to go to the left. One unit, two units, three units, four units, five units. And so you land on the number two. Seven minus five is the same thing as adding debt, which is subtracting the money away. You can, again, think of the $7 fighting with the $5 I owe. Once they collide and annihilate, what am I gonna have left? Only two, because after I pay this debt, I only have $2 left. So subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. All right, let's take a look at problem number five. Here we have six plus a negative two. How do we rewrite this in terms of subtraction? Adding the opposite sign is the same thing as just subtraction. So six plus a negative two is the same thing as six minus two. And you already know that that's equal to four, right? So let's see how it would make sense on a number line. If I start with $6, and I add to it, usually I go to the right, but since I'm adding debt, I'm not really adding more stuff, I'm adding what I owe. So I must slide to the left, going to the number four. And so I land on the number four, and that's why the answer is four. But that's the same thing as six minus two, sliding to the left and landing on four. All right, let's take a look at problem number six. Here we have nine minus five. Let's write it in terms of the opposite operation. If we start with $9 and we subtract five away, that's the same thing as adding a debt of negative $5, right? And so if I start with $9, then I would start here. And I'm usually adding, which means I go bigger, but I'm really not adding more stuff, I'm adding more debt, which means I must go to the left. One, two, three, four, five. And so you land on the number four. And so the answer to this is four, but this is the concept I'm trying to get you to see, that subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite sign, like this. All right, next question. Here we have eight plus negative two. That's eight plus a debt of negative two. So we're adding the opposite sign, which we now know we can write as subtraction. So it's the same thing as eight minus two. So if I have a starting point of $8 and I add to it uh, normally I'd be going to the right by adding, but I'm actually adding a negative number, which means I'm adding debt. So because I'm adding debt, I really must slide to the left. So really I'm worth, my net worth is really $6 because even though I have $8, I've taken on some debt. So when you include all of those together, I'm really only worth $6, which is the same thing as eight minus two. And so that's an answer of six. All right, next problem. What about 10 minus eight? Well, we're doing subtraction. Subtraction can always be thought of as the adding the opposite sign or adding the inverse operation. So it can be thought of as 10 plus negative eight because it can be thought of as instead of 10 going down by eight, you can be thinking of it as 10 going up by a debt of negative eight. So if I start with $10, usually when I add, I go to the right, but I'm actually adding more debt that I've borrowed to somebody else. So I must go to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the answer to this is two. And so the answer to that you get here is two. Of course, you already know that 10 minus eight is two, but 10 plus a negative eight is what we're learning here, that that can be thought of as subtraction, which is also two. All right, next problem. Only two more problems. What about four plus a negative one? Here we are adding a negative number. The, when you have two signs next to each other that are opposite like that, adding the opposite, you just change it into subtraction. Four minus one, these are the same thing. And you already know that four minus one is three, but we can think about it on the number line as four dollars that I have, right? And I'm adding to it, but I'm not adding more money, I'm adding more debt, which means I must slide to the left in answer of three, which is the same as four going down by one to three. And then here is our very last problem, six minus five. If you start at six and go down by five, you can think of it as adding more debt, which is negative five, six plus a negative five. So if you start at 
Usually when I add things, I go to the right. But since I'm adding debt, I'm adding money that I owe to the bank, I go to the left. One, two, three, four, and five uh, units uh, here. And so I land on a one, which means the answer to this is one. And we know that six minus five is one. And that's the same thing as six plus a negative five is one. And it's kind of irresistible to mention one more time, if the problem were, um, six minus six, that would be six plus a negative six. You would have six dollars in your possession, but you would take on a debt of six dollars, which means you owe everything you have. So when you include both of them together, your actual worth is zero in that case, because the six that you start with, you would be taking on debt of six dollars, which would take you all the way back to zero. So the point here isn't really to do a bunch of addition and subtraction. We're doing it and we're getting the answers because I want to introduce you to it. The point here is really just for you to get comfortable of any time you see subtraction in your mind, you can think of it as adding the negative number. And anytime you see adding a negative number, like plus minus like this, you can immediately think of it as subtraction. And I'm trying to reinforce that because it makes adding and subtracting negative and positive numbers much, much easier later on. So I'd like you to go through all of these, watch it a couple of times. It really, really is important. And then follow me on to part two. We'll continue building your skills with the idea of subtraction being adding the opposite sign or the addition of an inverse operation as a fancier way to say the same exact thing.